Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Monday, March 13th, 2023, here for my weekly cross-stitching update. Um, I've got a good amount to share today, and first off, I thought I'd mention my freckle <laughs> on my face. It had been getting larger over the past few years, so I have had it looked at, and it's not anything to be concerned about, um, but I am getting it treated to be removed. So it's currently in a state of it's going to be looking worse before it gets better kind of thing. So it's all good. <laughs> no worries. Um, I do have a little bit of stash acquisitions as well. So as I shared last week, I was um, gifted a pattern by Blushing Pink Stitches called Her Journey. And I went ahead and bought a cut of 40 count silvery moon linen. So I'll do this one over one full half cross on this. And I don't know when, but I want it to be sooner rather than later. So, and I got this from cross stitching supplies online. And in order to get free shipping, I threw in a cut of wheat, 28 count Lugana. They threw in a few extra inches because probably because it was just easier than cutting it off, but for, for no extra charge, which was nice. So it's a dark, um, like a medium brown, I guess, but a dark tan. It's very similar to Prim, the, the 25 count that I'm doing for my temperatures. Let me see what that looks like. Uh, maybe a little darker, but it's similar. Yeah. Anyways, so I got this with no plans, but it's nice. It's a, it's a darker neutral to do any future not amazingly large full coverages. <laughs> Could go on this or just use it for smaller things, but you know me. Go big or go home. And I also threw in a couple DMCs, white and black, just to get up to the little threshold. <laughs> so that was fun. I got that today. Um, and she is... Uh, Cross Stitching Supplies is going out of business later this year, so if there's anything on there that you have been wanting, go ahead and get it now because she's not restocking things. So, um, I think that's everything before I do my normal stuff. So let's just jump right in and do my temperature. Quaker, I was, was able to work on this on Sunday, like I like to do. A little bit bigger section this week. So I finished it up at home, but I did get it caught up. So another seven sections. This is 25 count vintage cloth in the color prim. One over one, full cross. Moving on through this March one, which is very spindly. And the sections have a few more stitches in them per day than some of these other ones have. It's so like this whole vine on this side of the pot of flowers is one color. There's a vine in the middle that's one color, and there's a vine on this side that's one color. Um, and I have those charted to stitch before the flowers around them for the most part. So you can have like a, a structure to be able to know where to put the flowers. So, And these flowers are all one day because they were a little bit too... Each petal was a little bit too small to be a day. And so I thought, you know what? They're not that big. Let's just do the whole whole little flower thing will be one day. So this is a day, this is a day, and then there's four days represented down here. And this little flower is not finished yet, but yeah, so that's where that is. It's still cool here in May, uh, March, but today is a very sunny, birds chirping, you know, spring day. It's supposed to rain again tomorrow though, so we're not completely out of the woods in the Southern California sense of <laughs> the word. I know a lot of places rain means spring, but here rain means winter. So, <laughs> um, I guess I can do my advent animals. I worked on this, um, in the car. This is what it will look like. It doesn't look like that yet. Cause it's looking a little creepy right now. And it was really funny when I had just the top of the, dark brown it looked like a little like um like alfalfa <laughs> on the little rascals <laughs> look like that but here this is now this is these are on 18 count ada light blue two over one full cross 
and it's looking a little weird um but it's coming along and the back stitching i think is gonna make this one i've got more eyes to do um which will also help and then lots of you know swirls and quills around the edge and then eyelashes and things so it's gonna be a lot cuter when it's done <laughs> but the teacup and pot are finished so i just have to fill in the rest of this hedgehog and then do all the back stitching so ow just poked myself so it'd be fun to finish that this week so we'll see if that is possible oh and if that's the case maybe i should show you the next one uh which one did i draw these i am stitching these in picking the next one based on whip go so my next one is oh yeah rudolph the red-nosed reindeer <laughs> for the 25th so here's this one these are all free on brooks books website you can still find them there so i'll be starting him not starting these are all already started a little bit but if i finish hattie hedgehog before the end of the week and i still have travel stitching opportunities i will pull out rudolph to get him going i started these a couple two or three years ago and did one color on them so that's the start of rudolph <laughs> Just the number and whatever was in his head area that was that same color. So, so that's a start on him in case I get him started this week. All right. I also did a little bit on flea market flowers. So not a lot, but this is by... It's so Emma. You can find it at the Fat Quarter Shop. I think they also have a digital version available now. I'm sticking with the pattern copy that I had just because um, it's easier and it's all in a bag. So it's kind of like this just grab and go. Don't have to worry about having a tablet. <laughs> so here is where I'm at now. This is 25 count vintage cloth in the color Barley, one over one full cross. And I got all the, the green finished in this block over here which is the one I have earmarked for March there's the flower bit and then the border around it is uh, left to do so I'm not sure if I'll get that done this week or if it'll take more than that the flowers are deceptively full um so we'll see it's only the 13th so there's still a good amount of month left to be able to work on this and Get over to my antique shoe collection a little bit later this year so or later this month um my bonus stitching in the afternoon when i had moments was my letter fairy this one i'm working on right now is letter f and this made great progress this week because i actually managed to pull it out pretty regularly tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday and sunday every day i did a little bit so Pretty happy with how this is looking now and this is just 30 to 45 minutes in the afternoon um, on each of those days not my focus and uh, not my focus day not my focus piece for the day so here is this one this is on the called for 32 count linen in water lily and I'm doing a color conversion but it's the the F colors are close to what's called for, but I'm changing the fairy to be it's two over two full cross. Did I say that? The fairy's blue and the beads are different. And I'll explain that in a minute. But I got a night another uh, length of thread for the beads all through here, which is really fun. So that's all one length of thread. I had like everything above this was one length of thread, and then everything below this was another length of thread. Cause I'm using one long piece of DMC to do the the beading so there's beads in here beads along her hem and then this swirl is completely finished so now i have this swirl that i'm stitching more i did these back stitching down here to finish that string up and this actually was stitched incorrectly i had see these holes for the dark green i had a, a third hole for a dark green which shouldn't shouldn't have been there so everything here was shifted down two stitches so I went ahead and frogged that back and restitched it. I could reuse the thread, thankfully, and got that fixed. So fixed that, 
and then added the stitching, you know, through here. So pretty fun. Um, I wanted to share with the bead choices that I'm doing. I'm not, I'm kind of picking where they go as I go. So I didn't like how they were, cho how the bead colors were chosen on this. Like they have blue along where they look, where they should be leaves, in my opinion. So like these are all blue. These are blue on the edges of the leaves. I thought that was a little weird. Um, so I'm kind of changing it. So I have these green beads that I'm using for anywhere it looks leafy or more substantial in the F. I'm using the green and this curly Q is green. Then I'm using my kind of paler, um, more of an iridescent blue green light sh color I'm doing for anything that's like at the end of the swirls. Um, they have a little petite bead that I'm using for some of these more dainty bits and I'm keeping blue bead beads only on the fairy and then anything darker on the F and the leaves will be green. So it's going to be a little bit different than what was called for. But as I come to a section that needs beads, I'm kind of making the decision as I go. So it's not following the symbols. Um, so be okay with that when you're working on something. If it doesn't make sense to you and you think it'll look better a different way. Go ahead and do it. So. I'm kind of getting my groove with that piece and it's fun to kind of see see it come together and I'm not I decided not to do all the brown first I'm more picking symbols more or less from the top down just to kind of fill in the spaces and I think that's going nicely so I'm happy with that this week my main project was my chatelaine because it's my focus for a finish for the month of March I spent um, the plan was to spend five days on this this week, and I spent, I think, four days last, last week, and then one more day Tuesday of this week to have ten total days. And there's a lot <laughs> that goes on with Chatelaines. If you're familiar with them at all, there's, like, layers of stuff. It's not just you stitch this area and you're done. You stitch the area, then you add specialty stitches, then you add some back stitching details, then you add beads, then you add more beads, then you add more beads, <laughs> more specialty stitches. It's like, it, there's layers of effect. And so I'm not done and I'm not close enough for one more day, especially Tuesday's not gonna be a great stitching day. So I struggled with wanting to know what to do with this because if I keep working on it, it's gonna bump some of my plans for March but I didn't, I didn't want to wait until next year to finish it. It's like, it's not, it's so close. So I went ahead and decided to bump some things because like my, my project I was trying to finish in January, um, I had a decent amount done, uh, still to go and I was enjoying it only so-so. I wasn't in love with it. So I was okay just to push it till next January to try to finish it. This one I'm really enjoying. Like I don't want to pick up I didn't want to pick up my winter cross on Sunday I just wanted to keep working on this so I did <laughs> so I did not work on my winter cross on seasonal Sunday but this is a winter band sampler so it's still seasonal just not the seasonal one I picked originally so made some good progress on this it does may not look as much as it like as much as it, it was because like I said all the layers <laughs> of things but I'm happy with where it's at and I'm going to keep working on it until it's done and just kind of adjust things. So um, I'm going to take out my family piece for today and if I need to, I can take out more family pieces and more seasonal pieces next this coming weekend, but I also have one floating day at the end of the month that I can kind of account for and shift things around. So. I'm hoping that I can finish this and still get five days on my other two full coverage and non full coverage or full coverage and full coverage, no background that I have planned for late for this month. I'm thinking I can get those two fit in at least, um, and still get this done. So some of the other like shifty things might not make it, but I think it'll be worth it. So here is where this is at now. This is winter wonderland band sampler by Chatelaine and it's on 32 count ice blue linen, mostly two over two full cross. 
there's specialty stitches and the little animals are one over one. I spent a lot of the time here working on this fence. So I filled in the beads in this, uh, this band and then I came down to, to work on the fence. So there's snow in silk lame braid along the top of the fence. There's also a row of beads along the top of the fence. Um, the fence, <clears throat> seven different browns. <laughs> I was shocked at it's it makes it look realistic and they're not in any um no similar nothing was similar every every uh, slat was different a different organization of those browns so it took a while to get that wood done and then the center has road stitches in each of the joints and there's these long stitches of the grass that I did after I did more snow down here this is more silk lame braid snow then I started working on these dense road stitches down here that are also done in silk lamade braid. She said they're supposed to resemble ice cubes. Or I could think I could see snowballs too. They're very, very puffy. It's kind of hard to tell, but anyways. So I'm not quite done with that row. There will be beads in between those road stitches as well. Then there's more of these little bits um, over the corners here going into more border down at the bottom. And there's a lot going on down here as well. It's not done yet. So there's a good amount left, but I didn't want to have to put this away again and get it out next year. I'm like, I just, I want to keep working on it. So I'm going to, <laughs> let's, uh, let's ride this wave while I'm really enjoying it. So yeah, so you'll see that hopefully get finished this coming week. Um, that's, that's my, that's my hope. Alrighty. That is pretty much all I worked on this week. And then I did a little bit of quilting too. Maybe I'll share that real fast because it's not a lot um, before I move on to my plans. I'm working on the... Um, Scrappiness is Happiness quilt along, doing one block per week <laughs> from the Scrappiness is Happiness book by Lori Holt. And I got behind, so I'm still working my way through it. I did this time, I did the Scrappy Strings block because I finally went and got myself some um, interfacing a week or two ago. And I did it all on Saturday. I just gathered strips because I've already cut all my scraps into various size strips according to her recommendations. So I just went to that bag and pulled the colors that I needed and didn't have to really cut anything and prep anything. So it was really fast to get this one going. So when I was done, I'm like, oh, well, I'll, I think I have a little bit more time. I'll cut blocks for the next one, which was a really easy block to stitch on Sunday, to sew up on Sunday. Only we had time change on Sunday and I took a nap instead. So <laughs> I did not get that second block stitched, um, but it is cut out, ready to go for next time. So that's good. So here's my scrappy strings quilt. Thought it turned out pretty nice. And all, all the different colors and it's sewn directly onto some interfacing to keep it from pulling on the bias, on the diagonal. So yeah, that one turned out cute. And I have blocks cut for the next one, which hopefully I'll be able to stitch up this coming week and show you next time. Um, along with maybe one more. That would be nice to be able to do two a week if I can. If I don't need a nap. <laughs> okay, plans for this coming week. Um, try to finish Winter Wonderland. Band Sampler is kind of top priority. My plan, I'm supposed to start on Wednesday working on my full coverage piece for March, which is gonna be Friends of the Library. This is a restart from a needlepoint kit that I decided I didn't like the needlepoint kit with a printed canvas and it just wasn't me. So I manually went block by block, stitch by stitch and put this into Pattern Keeper and I'm stitching it now on 18 count Ada, two over one, full crosses and so much happier. And I went through and just did a physical 
conversion from the tapestry wool to the DMC. And I did the uh, typewriter method when I worked on this last time. So the top two rows, it looks like, are completely finished. And this, even this book is pretty much all done. So I have some of this orange on my needle right now. So you'll for sure see more of that when I pull this out. So ideally, I will get five days on this at some point here in March. And I had scheduled two days this week and three days next week because I'm going to do uh, a Mirabilia start this weekend for uh, my friend Desiree's birthday. Um, if Winter Wonderland Band Sampler takes too long, I may just bump this um, down to uh, next week and work on it then. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. But it, I may or may not get this out this week. I would love to. But it just kind of depends on how um, how long that man sampler takes to finish. So I'm, I'm looking forward to working on this, though. I want to see how much I can get done when I give it, a, you know, several days to, in, to work on it. Then um, I'm hoping to start Petal Fairy for Desiree's birthday, who is now the Topsy Turvy Crafter here on Velocitube. And this is Needle Bling Designs Cream de Menthe, 32 count linen. It's really pretty. And I think she's gonna pop nicely on that fabric. So that'll be fun. So I'm probably, I like to center start. So I'll probably start here in her bodice and like work, work up to her face. I wanna get to those flowers too. So I'm not exactly sure. I'll probably, knowing me, I'll probably work up to her face, then up this antenna and then around, you know, to that. So it, it won't all happen. I was planning to give this two days to give it a nice, decent start. But if, again, if, if the Winter Wonderland band sampler takes up too many days, I may just give it one day. So we'll kind of play it by ear. I would like to start this for her birthday though. Um, and her birthday's on St. Patrick's Day. So the green fabric will be perfect, <laughs> perfect for that as well. Um, she is working on that already. So that's why I thought it'd be fun to start it um, for her birthday. So then if, she ever wants to sell at some point in the future say hey bring out yours we can work on it work on it together so um and then possibly if it doesn't get bumped i will pull out spring floral cross on sunday so this is another janlin kit they are now available at the cooler design studio or everything cross stitch as paper patterns or pdfs and i a little star on all four seasons this one has a good amount done already so here is the beginning oh where the starting point i guess for spring this is on 14 count light blue ada kit ada all the kit floss everything so all of these i started in the middle worked up and then i'm working my way down completing everything so all the back stitching and whatnot i have one length of the back stitching already done for those little purple flowers and i got some sticks stitched I kind of feel like filling out more of these words. So I might do that and then and fill out some of this. I don't know. We'll see how I feel if I get to it <laughs> on Sunday. So it should have this coming Sunday and the following Sunday. So we'll see how it goes. Um, This one can go over here. And I think that's everything. Kind of a little bit different because I don't like to change my plans. But sometimes needs be. <laughs> I was just loving that band sampler too much to think about putting it away for a whole nother year and bringing it out next March to try to finish it. I'm like, I don't want to. I want to do it now. <laughs> so I'm going to. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy whatever you're working on this week and enjoy the weather wherever you are. Hopefully it's mellowing out um, and have a wonderful week. Happy stitching. Bye.